Hi everyone, welcome to the presentation on shared virtual addressing for high performance ARM infrastructure platforms. My name is Vivek Gautam and I'm part of the open source group at ARM. Here's a brief outline of my talk. I'll first introduce to the shared virtual addressing. Then we'll talk about the hardware and software requirements in order to implement SVA. We'll then go into the virtualization use case as virtualization is one of the key enabling technology on various infrastructure platforms. Then we'll talk about the current design as proposed by the set of patches that have been posted to the mailing list. And we'll talk a brief about the upstream status. So before introducing what is shared virtual addressing, Let's first try to understand why we need shared virtual addressing. Today's infrastructure platforms typically deploy a number of high performance accelerators, such as general purpose GPUs, smart NICs, etc. These accelerator devices usually sit on the PCI bus and can have their own private cache and memory. The PCI bus provides the backbone bus architecture for most of the infrastructure platforms. Now these accelerator devices can, all, can also be virtualized by various IO virtualization techniques such as PCA pass-through or emulation. In this diagram, we see a very simple laid out ARM infrastructure platform. On the left, we have a host system with a number of ARM CPUs. There's a CMN interconnect, which provides the backbone interconnect to access the host memory by various masters. The ARM SMMU provides the translation for various IO devices. The PCA root complex can have a number of lanes to which various PCA devices can be connected. Now, this is a very simple laid out diagram. When the accelerator device now wants to initiate a DMA, it would request the host to provide a DMA buffer. The host software will prepare a DMA buffer and program it into the bar register of the accelerator device. Now, one thing to note here is the accelerator device which will now be using this DMA buffer and the host have their own view of memory. The accelerator device and the host cannot work together on the same piece, on the same uh, address space. Now in this traditional memory model, the programming complexity increases since any workload that has to be programmed by the host software into the accelerator, a separate DMA buffer has to, has to be prepared. There's a memory copy often involved that also introduces the performance degradation. Additionally, today's infrastructure platforms also deploy a number of coherency protocols such as CCIX or CXL. In the absence of SVA, programmers are not able to take full advantage of the coherency link. So what is shared virtual addressing? SVA is a technique that allows sharing the same virtual address space between the CPU and the IO device. Both CPU and, and the IO device will work on the same virtual address pointer and can access the same physical memory as well. The SVA provides the device or the accelerator device, the ability to perform DMA on a process address space rather than using a separate DMA buffer. In the diagram above, here we see the CPU and the PCI accelerator device have a have distinct virtual address space. The CPU 
uses MMU in order to do this VA to PA translation. And this MMU walks separate page tables called CPU page tables. The PCA accelerator device, on the other hand, has a different IO virtual address space. And the SMMU that provides the translation walks separate device page tables. SVA tries to bridge the gap here. It basically provides the PCI accelerator device the ability to use the same virtual address pointer as CPU. Both MMU and SMMU are able to walk the same set of page tables that can be prepared by the CPU. And therefore, any workload that the the, that the program running on the CPU wants to offload to the accelerator device can simply pass the virtual address pointer to the device and start the DMA. Some of the adjacent methodologies such as OpenCL 2.0 shared virtual memory or CUDA unified virtual memory can make use of this shared virtual address. Some of the advantages of SVA that we see are there's no need for a separate set of page table for the device. The device can use the same CPU page tables for any address for the SMMU uh, to do its address translation. There's definitely reduced programming complexity. Now there's no need of a separate specialized driver running in user space or the kernel to provide a DMA buffer to be programmed into the device. Sharing the data between the CPU or the processors and the device also becomes easier now. There are fewer cache and TLV maintenance operations since the CPU and the device are using the same virtual address space pointer. The CPU does not have to do any cache flush operation in order for the device to see the latest copy of the data. Now in a system that implements cache coherency protocols, SVA brings additional advantages. It enables zero cache maintenance operation and it also allows the CPU and the device to work on the buffer at the same time using atomic operations. Now let's look at this. Let's look at some of the hardware and the software requirements in order to realize SVA. Now in the first diagram we saw the basic pieces that are there that are present in an infrastructure platform are PCA device supported by PCA root complex a translating agent such as SM, ARM SMMU and the various CPUs. On the PCI side, the PCI protocol or the PCI specification defines a set of protocols, namely address translation service, page request interface and process address space identifier. The ATS is a memory access type TLP packet that can be initiated by a PCA device. And this ATS allows the device to request for the address translation prior to initiating a DMA. The page request interface or the PRI allows the device to request for any IO page fault handling. So whenever the address translation fails, as part of the ATS request, the device can initiate a TLP packet for PRI. And the translating agent will try to serve this, this PRI request. The process address space identifier is an additional ID that is emitted by the PCA device in addition to the requester ID. This PESID helps the SMMU identify various translation tables 
for various devices that are assigned to virtual machines. On the ARM IP side, SMME version 3 supports all these PCA protocols. As part of the ATS support, SMME v3 provides the address translation for incoming ATS requests. As part of the PRI support, SMME v3 implements a PRI queue that is filled by messages coming for the page request interface. The SMMU v3 substream ID support is analogous to the PASID ID and helps in identifying various translation regimes. SMMU v3 also supports nested translation with the help of its various data structures called stream table entry and context descriptors. We need support for nested translation since in case of virtualization, the device would usually want to do both stage one as well as stage two translation so that the device is isolated at the VM level as well. The stream table entry in SMME v3 usually stores the configuration for stage two translation, whereas the context descriptor provides the translation configuration for stage one. On the software side, when lo looking at the virtualization scenario, various software pieces that are required in order to implement SVA could be, we need support for virtual machine manager, such as KVM tool that can allow hosting a number of virtual machines. In addition to support for KVM, there is additional support needed for VFIO as well as VartIO IMMU in order to realize SVA. A para virtualized IMMU or VartIO IMMU present in the guest provides the DMA remapping capability for devices that are running in the, in the guest kernel. The VFIO framework or the virtual function IO framework provides the IO virtualization technique called PCA pass through or device assignment. VFIO allows any PCA device to be assigned to the guest directly. This, these various software pieces will also be explained in upcoming slides. Now, in order to understand the SVA flow, let us first try to understand it at the host operating system level. This will help in identifying the various pieces and how to put together these pieces in order to realize the complete SVA system. Any SVA system uh, for example, which is running in a host kernel environment will involve three basic things. One is SVA binding, then page table preparations, and lastly, the IO page fault handling. SVA binding refers to the process of binding the device PESID ID with the process address space. This will help in going or this will help in referring to the right virtual memory address space for any incoming requests coming from the device. The page table preparation as part of this, the SMME v3 context descriptors are programmed with the CPU page table information. The CPU page table information will now serve as the stage one table will now serve as the uh, translation tables that can be walked by the SMME v3 now. The IO page fault handler present uh, that is running in the kernel driver 
should provide or should call the kernel page fault handler in order to update the CPU page tables in order so that any page faults can be handled. Once these page faults are handled, the IU page fault handler also sends a command PRI response, which is a SMMU v3 command that is sent to the device as part of successful PRI request completion. Now on the right, let's look at this diagram that provides the flow of SVA in a host environment. A PCA class driver is controlling the PCA device. This PCA device can directly talk to the SMMU v3 hardware. This SMMU v3 hardware is controlled by SMMU v3 driver running in the host kernel. Now, in order to start the SVA function, the PCA class driver will first try to enable various hardware features that are required in order to realize SVA. These functions can involve supporting uh, the, the functionality for ATS and PRI. As part of this, the SMMU v3 functionalities for ATS and PRI will also be enabled. Now, once these functionalities are enabled, the PCA class driver will then request for SVA bind to happen. As part of this, the SMMU v3 will also try to program the PESID tables or the context descriptors with the CPU page table information. At this stage, the device PESID is also bound to the process address space and any incoming transactions that are come, uh, originating from the PCA device and that contain the PESID information can be linked to the particular process address space. Once the device finishes SVA binding, the class driver can now initiate a DMA. It will first try to program a DMA buffer, which can be a user space pointer. Once the device starts a DMA, it will first send ATS request. Now in a case where the user space pointer is not a resident memory, the ATS request will fail. And the ATS completion will be sent back to the device with a translation failure. If the PRI is enabled on the PCA device, the PCA device will then try to send a request for PRI. This request will go to the translation agent, which can be ARM SMMU v3. ARM SMMU v3 has PRI queue implemented, and this PRI queue is filled with the information from this PRI TLP packet. Once the PRI queue is filled, there's an interrupt raised and this interrupt will then be serviced by the SMMU v3 driver running in the host kernel. As part of this interrupt handler, the SMMU v3 driver will try to invoke the kernel page fault handler so that the page fault can be handled and the CPU page tables can be populated. Once the CPU page tables are populated and there is a correct mapping for VA2 physical address space, uh, successful PRI response has to be sent to the PCA device. As part of this, the SMU v3 will send a command PRI response and thereby the SMU v3 hardware will send a successful page response to the PCA device. Once the PRI is succeeded, the device can send the ATS request once again. <coughs> and this time the ATS will be successful with the translation for VA to PA. And this will then complete the DMA workload. Now let us talk about the virtualization. Virtualization is one of the key enabling technology in infrastructure platforms. It allows sharing of resources 
between various virtual machines, be it I.O. resource or the CPU resource. Various I.O. virtualization techniques such as PCI pass-through or emulation allows sharing the I.O. devices among various virtual machines. PCI pass-through is one of the most common I.O. virtualization technique and, and it allows the PC device to be assigned to a virtual machine. Any class driver that is running in the guest can control the PC device directly and the user space applications can program various workloads running in the virtual machine. On the right side is a software layout depicting the software stack running at various exception levels on a ARM64 system. The hardware layer consists of PCI accelerator device as well as ARM SMME v3. These two are controlled by their respective drivers that are running in the host kernel which is running at EL2 exception level. The host kernel also runs the KVM stub which provides support to host various virtual machines using a virtual machine manager such as KVM tool or QMU. The VFIO interface or the VFIO framework running in the Linux kernel at EL2 provides support for direct device assignment or PCI pass through and thereby the PCI accelerator device can be assigned to the gas kernel. The KVM tool virtual machine manager running at EL1 should implement support for this VFIO and it also needs to implement support for, for the backend IUMMU driver. A front-end IUMMU driver present in the gas kernel running at EL1 provides support for DMA remapping for various device drivers running at gas kernel level. Any gas application running at EL0 can program the workload via the PCI class driver into the PCI accelerator device which is now assigned to this virtual machine. So some of the key components of this entire software stack is one is the IU virtualization technique or which is the PCI pass through and the VFIO PCI enables support for that. The DMA remapping capability in the guest via nested translation is supported with the help of what IU IMMU driver. The front-end VertIO driver is, is running in the gas kernel, while the back-end VertIO IMMU driver is running in the virtual machine manager. Now, as part of this entire software stack, any DMA faults also have to be handled. And these DMA faults are handled with the help of the VFIO interface only. This software stack provides the basis for implementing SVA in the virtual machine environment. So the current proposed design of SVA is based on the VFIO and IOMU API changes that were posted by Eric and a big thank to him for this work. These changes implement various VFIO and IOMMU user APIs that, that will enable supporting shared virtual addressing using a virtual machine manager. There's also an ongoing IOMMU user API proposal by Kevin, which provides support for various user API implementations in order to request for various pieces that are needed for shared virtual addressing such as programming stage one page tables into the IUMMU hardware, requesting for TLB invalidations 
and so on. This user EPA proposal also brings together the various pieces for IOS ID allocations and management interface. The changes that are done in what IO IMMU driver should mostly be independent of the various IMMU or VFIO user API changes. Some of the additions that are proposed to the word IO IMMU specification as well as the driver include separate set of requests for programming the stage one page tables for requesting TLB invalidations as well as sending the successful page response back to the host. And couple of feature bits have been added as part of this support. Now let us understand the flow of SVA in virtual machine as per this current design. Considering the DMM map use case where the device or where the device driver running the guest kernel would initiate the DMA on a PCI device that is assigned to the virtual machine. The device driver will first initiate a DMA and as part of that, the VertIO IMMU driver We'll try to program the PESID tables or the stage one page tables with the CPU information, with the CPU page table information. It will then send an attached table request to the underlying backend VertIO driver. The backend VertIO driver running in the KVM tool will process this attached table request and will prepare a VFIO structure that contains all this information. This VFIO layer will then call particular IOCTLs such as for setting the PESIT table in order to program the stage one page tables. This call flow will trickle down to RMSMMV v 3 driver where the driver will parse the stage one page table information such as TTBR, the translation control register settings, etc., and will program these stage one page table configurations into the RMSMV3 hardware. Now the stage one page tables are programmed and the DMA can be initiated. When the DMA is initiated and the PCA device sends the ATS request, the ATS request would fail when the page is not resident. As part of that, the ARM SME v3 hardware will raise a fault. This fault information will be passed by the ARM SME v3 driver and it will call all the masters to handle the fault information. The VFIO interface will try to parse this fault information and it will prepare a fault buffer information and it will program that into a VFIO region, which is a new region that is added as part of the SV implementation by Eric. Once this VFIO region is programmed with the DMA fault information, an event FD is raised. This event FD reaches the user space running at TL1 and the KVM tool VFIO driver will parse the VFIO or the DMA fault information and it will program that DMA fault information into the VertIO IMMU. The VertIO IMMU driver running at the KVM tool will program the VertIO rings with this fault information and it will signal the VertIO queue so that the front end what are you are you driver can handle the fault information the guest IMMU driver will parse this dma fault information and it will 
invoke the kernel page fault handler so that the CPU page tables can be updated for this particular virtual machine. Once the CPU page table informations are updated, a successful response has to be sent back to the PCI device. The VertIO IM driver in the guest will prepare a page response and it will send the page response request to the underlying backend VertIO IOM driver. This will be translated into the VFIO structure and the VFIO will write that page response into the DMA fault response VFIO region. This write will be handled by the VFIO interface running at the host kernel and the fault information will be sent back to the ARMSMME v3 driver. This SMMU v3 driver, if it's a successful page response, it will then send a command PRI response to the PCI device. The unmap requests or the request for invalidations also go via the same flow where the what IU IMU driver prepares the invalidation requests. And these requests go to the host ARM SMME v3 driver via VFIO layer. And the various DLBs that are that can be tagged with the passive information can be flushed. On the right, we see now a consolidated flow diagram for this DMA mapping in a VSVA implementation. The pass-through PCA device will have to initiate a DMA. But before that happens, the VertIO IMMU driver will try to program the stage one page tables and it will send the attached table request and the set passive table IOCTL for VFIO will be called and the stage one page tables will be programmed as part of into the ARM SMV3 driver. Now, when the DMA is initiated with guest virtual address, this address may not be resident into the memory. And that's why when the ATS request comes to the ARM SMV3, it will try to walk the page stage one page tables, but in the absence of right mapping, it will raise a fault. This fault information will be sent back to the VertIO IM driver running in the guest and it will try to populate the CPU page tables with the right mapping as part of the page fault handling. Once the page fault is handled, the page response is sent back to the SMME v3 with the help of new requests for, from VertIO IMMU. This page response information is parsed by the ARM SMU v3 driver and a command PRI response is written into the command queue of ARM SMU v3. As part of that, as part of the command PRI response, a successful page response is sent back to the PCA device and the page fault is handled. Now looking at the current upstreaming status, major work towards enabling the SVA support in guest kernel has been done in the word IUI MMU driver. Most of these changes are independent of the user API changes in VFIO or IUMMU. These changes mostly include support for nested page table, and the support for handling DMA faults from the host kernel and to send the page fault response from the guest kernel back to the host kernel. Couple of patch series that have been posted some time back are present here and the next version we are planning to publish soon. We're also planning to incorporate any changes into the word IU, IUMMU driver arising from 
the dependencies from what I O from the IOMMU user API proposal. The KVM tool changes are based on the what I O IOMMU driver changes that are done by John Philip present in this branch. And a big thank to John Philip for his overall guidance in order to implement this SPA. That is all I had in the presentation. Thank you so much.